Mental Gosh, Health right. Awareness Month, y'all. Go do something for your mental health or oh, oh, help oh, somebody. Oh, oh. Yes, 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 Dr. Faith. Guess what? Right. Go, go, it's go, go, also go. Masturbation Month. What? I didn't know such thing existed. Like, really? Oh, well, we were just talking about that. So there you go. Really? There's a little nugget for you. <laughs> There's a, that, that'll help me, your mental health in a whole bunch of ways. <laughs> Masturbation health, month yes. and mental health <laughs> awareness month. You can't beat it. That's something there's there's a connection. There's a connection. M M&M, and M M&M, M squared. <laughs> yeah. That and a lot more coming up on Rolando on Demand. Yes. <laughs> that was yeah. a perfect commercial. It's road time. Welcome to Rolando on Demand. I love my podcast because we not only tackle the tough issues of the day, but we deal with celebrity interviews and information that can help you in your business or relationships. This is Rolanda On Demand. Dr. Faith Brown, these are tough talks that we have to have, especially during these tough times. But mental yeah. health is so important. And I just, you yeah. know, we are all learning how much we keep it under the covers and under the rug. Yeah learning how to get over stigmas, but now is the time to talk about it. What are you yeah. seeing? How are we dealing? How are we, have we coped with this pandemic and all the stuff that's come with it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, thank you so much, first of all, for hosting this and this being Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, thank you so much. And, and how apropos, given everything that we've been through since March 2020, and for some, even before then, they just didn't know it. You know, um, how are we doing? How are we doing on a scale of one to 10? I probably say we're at a six and a half, somewhere around there. So we're doing, we're doing okay, but there are instances um, that are really not well. You know, there are areas where we're not well. And I say that we are six because we are getting up and we're moving, right? We're getting up and we're moving. So that's half the battle. So we're over five. <laughs> But we know that during this pandemic, um, uh, we know that divorce rates have been up, domestic violence has been up, uh, violence against all races have has been up, um, child suicide has been up, um, you name it. Um, okay. Yeah, it's been present. Opioid addic addiction is up. Um, and because, just because we've been sheltered in place, um, a lot has been uncovered, you know? Uh, parents are having to relate to children differently and they, they've discovered that I may not know my child as well as I thought I knew my child. Mm -hmm. Teenagers are very good at hiding how they feel because for the most part, they become people pleasers along the way they want to please mom they want to please dad they want to please everyone so those things are not socially acceptable they tend not to talk about because mom or dad will be disappointed so they tend not to know that they may present one way and go into their rooms and be totally different mm -hmm. um different people um and 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 spouses or partners who are living in these tight spaces you know we get up and we see one another eight o'clock in the morning we go our separate ways we're apart for eight hours we come back we have something to talk about but now we're together 24 hours a day. And for some, and that's not working out too well. You know? I, you know, I spoke with somebody and they were talking about, this was when we were more, you know, couldn't go anywhere. But yeah. here he was running this huge business, sitting at his kitchen table. His three kids were on the other side of the table. His wife was in the little alcove off the kitchen. I was like, oh my God, he must be going freaking nuts. You know, yeah. here's a guy who has a big office in the Empire State Building or something, you know, yeah. and here, I mean, but these adjustments, there's so many adjustments that we have to make. Um, yeah. You know, many of us have been talking about what does success mean today? Because success yeah. is coming in different arenas and it's one making you wonder, do I still have my feet solidly on the ground? Um, yeah. And also just being, you know, when when you don't have the big house on the hill and the and the car and yeah. getting your nails done every day, what kind of effect does that have on you? Are you really okay? I, I know. Because, LA question. <laughs> I know because success looks really different. Success then looks like can I just get up and get my clothes on, get my makeup on, and get to the right? Meet, can I right? make it to the <laughs> Zoom in the next <laughs> room? <laughs> yes, and have a little quiet in the process. That you know, yeah. 
that's what it looks like. And let me just say, like, because of these things, we get to see really how we're coping. We're a coping, like, how strong are we really? We can do it when we're expected to do it. We're expected to be with people during the weekend, right? So we're coping. But when we've been expected to do it eight hours a day, 10 hours a day, and these people are in my space and I'm negotiating personal and professional, oh my God, oh my God, you know? So no, no. So success now looks like, can I just get up and get dressed and get to this meeting without, you know, going overboard and going off on someone in the process. That's, That's right. <laughs> well, you know, you, what I like is that, that when you deal with psychology, you deal a lot with the psychology in the workplace as well. Yeah, and so, you. you know, it's a lot of, I wonder, even, you know, there's some people who are going to be like, oh my God, I really love being at home. And there are people like, yeah. my goodness, get me up from this kitchen table and get me back to an office. Sure. But so many of us have gone through such major changes on so many levels, financially, relationship, uh, uh, work-wise, that so much of us has changed that even when you get back with your so-called unit or network or family yeah. outside of the family, um, there are going to be some major shifts there that are going yeah. to be um, that are going to be part of the new the new the new dynamic let me just say yeah 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 i couldn't agree more and i think there will be a great many of corporations that decide that they are not going to call their people back a hundred percent because they found that they are equally if not more productive being away from the office and of course that saves the company money and then there will be those as you stated that will go back into the workforce and it will be a new dynamic and so um, I think some people will ease into that, you know, with, with relative ease. And there will be some that will find it challenging because on top of all of that, there's been not only loss in the personal and professional space, you know, someone who was in that space when they left may yeah. not be in that space be, upon yeah. return, right? And yeah. so, you know, we're dealing with uh, almost like picking up life where we left off in a sense. And there could be some grief actually associated with that. I would urge every employer, every employer, um, encourage them that this is the time to really cultivate relationships in the ranks. We have found, and, and we know this for sure, that your greatest asset are your people, is your personnel, investment in cultivating relationships, real relationships with your people, not making um, a, a, a standard um, cookie cutter, um, 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 I guess, mechanism of action or policy across the board for it to work for everyone. Actually have conversations, communicate. Don't just walk by you know, a row of 10 people just because I'm VP and not say anything. Mm -hmm. Take the time to ask Marsha, Marsha, how's the dog? You know, Marsha, yeah. how's you know how are you? How are the kids doing? How and have a real exchange there because it's relationships that's going to get us through to the next level. If we've been powerful at home, connecting virtually, how much more powerful will we be when we are in person but having true connection? That's right, and that's where that empathy comes in, and that's Absolutely. also where that connection comes in because. You know, as 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 frivolous as it sounds, I, I can remember when everybody in the United States or everybody in the world had one thing in common. We all had one birthday under COVID. Yes. Yeah. You know, and if if nothing else, it brought us like a, that was an aha moment that kind of connected yeah. us. So th this is a conversation that can connect. Um, yeah. It's also something that reminds us that we have no idea what people are dealing with before they get to the no. office or before they get to church or synagogue or temple or before no. we meet them out for, for a coffee. We don't know what people are dealing with and we are seeing some increases um, in, in you know, the breakups you talked about, the addictions yes. we've talked about and, sure. and that would only make sense. You said that even zooming i mean you know we have to adjust what we are calling the new norm or what there is yes. no new norm or the new mm -hmm. paradigms of things um but even though the back-to-back -back zooming has an effect on yeah. mental health yeah. as well it does it does we are completely burned out on zoom completely burned out because what companies tend to do is to schedule yeah, meetings the burnout as, factor. that's what yeah. i want to talk about the burnout right. factor. 
Yeah. Great. They, they typically schedule meetings as they would in the office. And sometimes we could rotate out of one office directly into the conference room for the next meeting and back to another office. And it's not that way when we're in the virtual space. As a matter of fact, talking about the preservation of personnel, your greatest asset, you really want to make sure that everyone is getting up and actively moving every 50 minutes, five yeah. zero every yeah. 50 minutes, you wanna make sure that happens. And that not only helps the individual, but it helps them to be more productive when they come back to you for the next meeting. It's imperative yeah. that we get the blood flowing, that we get energy you know, to that part of our brain. So get, make sure that you remember the humanity factor. Remember that these are human beings, right? And one of the most validating things we can do is to give someone permission to be human and not robotic, right? We do expect more than a bathroom break. <laughs> we expect right, and your and your butt, yes. you get fatty fatigue. That's just oh, fatty you or you're fatigue. gonna, and then that sciatica thing's gonna kick in, and then. But they say that that sitting is the new smoking, so you got to yes. get up and move. And then also, uh, they say another way to battle depression is get out in nature, even if it's just for a few minutes to take a deep breath or something. So yeah, those yeah, kind of absolutely things. absolutely have to. You absolutely have to. And we're talking about, you know, a few things that people can do. But I also want to add this, if you will, is that it is, it is vitally important that we call people by name. Let's validate their being, mm -hmm. validate their humanity. You mentioned empathy and compassion. And one of the most um, loving and kind things you can do is to call one by name. That means you see me, you recognize me, right? And 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 that in and of itself is validating. And yeah. then following up with with a, with a heartfelt question um, or even comment is um, it would 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 go a long ways yeah. towards meeting goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you, how about how do you advise uh, your clients and and any any of us to deal with the. Um, the anxiety that's coming with this whole thing. Now, you know, we've gotten through the toughest parts. We're yeah. still in it though. Um, right. But as we slowly but surely come out, you know, there are gonna be some shocking moments. There's gonna be this major adjustment. The, 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 we gotta look at our, our money situation. Our, you know, our sure. kids may not be socializing as well as we thought. How do we deal with that when you, you're looking at your bank account, you're looking at your nutty kid, you're looking at your, you know, and you're going like, <laughs> how can I not be depressed? How can right. I not want to jump out a window right, right now? Absolutely. Absolutely. So at the core of all of this is control, right? So anxiety typically sets in out of fear and fear out of lack of control, feeling out of control of a situation. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I would advise is to just look up and ask yourself if the sky is falling. It may feel like it, but is the sky falling? If the sky is not falling, let's breathe. Right. I would advise a breathing exercise because that takes us out of the survival mode of our brain. Because when we're under anxiety attack, we're like in survival mode. We're just trying to breathe, right? You know, trying to keep like our head above water. Yeah. Just, yeah, gasping. So just gasping. slow down your heart rate. So take a deep breath in. Hold, yes, and then let it out. And as you let it out, your body will begin to calm. And when you do, believe it or not, there is actually a physiological component or a biological component, Rolanda, where we can actually get to a different part of the brain. We can get to thinking then about one, not jumping out the window. <laughs> Number right. two, how can I get more money in here? <laughs> you know, we can then think very constructively about how to deal with these things. But as long as we're in defense mode or survival mode, we then block every opportunity to do that. So just breathe, breathe, right. folks, breathe. Well, and, yeah, and know I, that you're not going to control everything, right? right. You're not going to control everything. And just as we had this pandemic, something else is going to come. So just know we're not going to control it. Ex Expect the unexpected coming out of this. We're not going to control it. If the sky is not falling, breathe. All right, you still breathe. have a chance to run. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but I don't, I don't, I'm totally with you on that. Nothing's going to yeah. eat you up. Remember that today was the day you were worried about last year and you're still That's here. Right. You're fine. That's right. Um, right. But I do like that, that, you know, if, if you, if all the news is depressing you, turn it off. If there's a friend who's bringing you down, get off the phone with them. You know, there, there, right. there are things that we do have control over and uh, that helps our mental health too. Anything Absolutely. else that you would say from what you're observing or, or um, 
anything that you would advise us to do just to keep our keep our wits about us in this time? I think I think a lot of Absolutely. us are doing, doing better than we probably thought we would. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's when we tend to focus on ourselves in um, in a negative way that things begin to go sideways. But if we think of taking care of ourselves, so there are a few things that I just like to mention. One of them is to engage a routine, engage a routine, the, the, the body, the mind loves routine. So um, have a, some kind of practice for ourselves in the morning. So if that means getting up 30 minutes to an hour earlier so that you have that time to yourself, it's imperative that we're able to take care of ourselves before we take try to take care of anyone else, right? Because right. we can't pour we can't pour from an empty glass. We have to fill ourselves with what we need before we can begin to take care of someone else. So routine is important. Whatever that it's is, like for a morning you. routine, like a prayer, routine. breathing, yoga, something that's Absolutely. sacred for the morning. I hear so sacred. many people talk about that. Like that is so important to them. So yeah, it it is. And once you get into the routine, it's hard to get out of it. You you then crave that time to yourself private time when everything is quiet you can you know, journal that's read. right how about just have a cup of tea and looking out at nature taking mm. a walk in nature with a cup of tea it doesn't have to be anything extraneous it just needs to be some time that you have with yourself just you to gather your thought to compose yourself to say, yeah, I do have, you know, three or four things I really want to get done today. And this is how I'm going to approach that. So routine is important, a morning routine. Secondly, eat well. Eat well. If we've learned one thing is that our diet can make us strong or it can make us vulnerable, right? right? The, the stronger, the stronger our, our bodies are, the, the stronger our immune system is, we're in better shape to fight whatever comes our way. So let's make sure that we give our bodies the fuel it needs. I know that we have the tendency to reach for comfort food. I'm a Ooh. chips person. Give me a bag Ooh. of potato chips any given day. But I have to remember that if I am not giving it what it needs, then I'm also denying myself an opportunity to fight another day, right? Well, I'm, I'm distracted from that. Didn't we quickly learn during COVID that your health is your wealth? Because if you didn't it have is. your health, that was it. Absolutely. You didn't have anything to fight that. And, with. and a lot of us reinvented the way that we're eating because we knew our immune systems may be um, compromised just in our old habits. Absolutely. And, he, and here's just a general rule of thumb. If it's white, leave it where it is. <laughs> if it's white, if it's white it ain't it all right. <laughs> if it's white, it's not all right. We want to reach for the green and all the colors. Green and all the colors. Red, green and yellows, all the colors. oranges. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And eating and eating the whole food. If we want vitamin C instead of reaching for orange juice, reach for the orange. Right. If right. we want right. if we want an apple or we have that taste, reach for the nap for the apple, not the apple juice. So we just want to give ourselves a fighting chance. So having a great diet or meal plan in place would be good. And um, I would I would encourage everyone to get at least 30 minutes of exercise in a day, whether uh, that's no. walking. Yeah. Whether that's walking or, you know, cardio or weights or Pilates or yoga, because again, that's about sending the body, giving it endorphins and dopamine and everything that it needs to feel good. We want to feel good, right? About ourselves. And as you stated, you talk about packing on the pounds during COVID, man, you know? They said 40% of women put on weight. We all put on weight. I don't think it was just the women because I saw Will Smith yeah. posting about his, his dad bod <laughs> giving me a challenge. So I, I know. And you know what? And I'm going to stop saying this, but, but I get really challenged on the 30 minutes of exercise and I know better. You know, I'm lucky that I have a, that I can, you know, things are under control, but still it's good for your heart. It's good for the tone and, and balance stuff like that. Just little things as you get older, you know, and, but you're saying it makes you feel good too, the endorphins. And if I'm getting back into dating, I got to have it tight. Let me tell you, girl, <laughs> you know, and you want him to have it tight too. Because well, listen, <laughs> here's what's good for your mental health. Uh, and because I tell men this, whatever it is you're looking for in your girl, she's looking for that in you. 
So listen, don't get it twisted at all. Whatever it is, if you don't want her having love handles, check it. She don't want you having it either. So all of us, <laughs> because which brings us to the other point, which is, can we get sex as a part of the routine? Can we put that on the list? Whether Remember that? Is, that? Okay. Remember sex? <laughs> Listen, listen, it is so good for me. I, listen. My dog, my dog even agrees. That's right. That's right. But I agree with you. Sex should be part of mental health. Let's put it. How about it is part of mental health? It needs to be at the top of the list. Yeah, the, I agree. It's the chemical exchange. This is, there's a, there, the power of healing is the, the power of touch is so healing that, you know, it's engagement. It's all of that. You know, uh, God knew what he was doing. You know, he knew what he was doing. We, you know, he could have multiplied the earth and made everybody else the way he made Adam. That could have <laughs> happened. That could have happened. I know. No, no, no. We're going to make this good and irresistible. And there's something about that chemical exchange that things about the endorphins and the oxytocin, all of that, that keeps us bonding. To, we weren't meant to be alone, Rolanda. We were no. not meant. No, we are social creatures. We were never meant to be alone. The power of touch is healing. There have been uh, studies done. You know, you may have remembered this, the Reese's monkeys that, you know, they had one group, um, two groups of monkeys. Um, they were feeding them. One had a wire mom. Um, that they were feeding and she had no towel. The other had a towel wrapped around her and, and was feeding. The one with the towel, the, the monkeys that were nursed from the towel mannequin, they lived. The ones that were fed from the wire mannequin died. Oh. So they're the power of, of, of touch. We've had orphans, actual human orphans, mm -hmm. you know, kids who were, who were um, fed from being held. Others who were not held, the ones that were not held didn't thrive. So there is something to the power of touch. So anytime we can get it in again, whether it's with a partner or if you're loving yourself, do right. whatever you have to do. <laughs> get it on the list until you get your breakthrough, you know? So right. yeah, yeah. I think is. on that note, a lot of people are going to be signing up for the dating sites again <laughs> and getting back out there, yes. getting their, their swerve on. Yes, uh, yes, That is so important. Anything else it that is. you would tell us? I mean, these are great tips. These are things that, um, yeah, I mean, let me just ask you this. How do you know yeah. when, you know, just your regular depression has gone too far? I mean, I will yeah. admit there are times when I have listened to so much BLM and then somebody else yeah. dies and then, sure. you know, all the COVID stuff. It's just so much. And I can remember times I'd just go put my head under the covers and go to bed at four o'clock, just call it sure. day off, just, just right. mental health day. Um, right. But how do you know that that's just the way I cope. I give myself a minute, then I get over it. But how do you know when it's, it's yeah. time to go get help? Right. And I think that's, you know, you make a great distinction, right? We can have a bad day. And I think we should all give ourselves grace. You know that it is a problem, whether it's a, whether it is in the realm of depression, anxiety, or addiction, when it begins to interfere with our routine or our productivity. Mm -hmm. That's so just a common rule, you know, just a rule of thumb, when it begins to interfere with our productivity or our routine, then it's a problem. So we may go to bed for a week, right? And we're not going to feel that. But if we go to bed for three weeks, we're going to feel that, oh my right? Goodness. We're going to sense that. Right, yeah. right, right. We're in a dark place then, you know? Um, we may, you know, uh, use, we may, we may have a glass of wine, you know, every night. Mm. And that's okay. But by the time it becomes three glasses and I can't get up the next day, and then there's three glasses and I can't get up the next day, right? It begins to interfere with the routine or my productivity. And then we know it's a problem. Right. It's a problem. Yeah. So for so very- don't for, take that one glass of wine away. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. <laughs> one glass is pretty good. You know? You're right. And that one glass is just takes that edge tolerance. off. There you yeah. go. And there are some folks who have tolerance for even two. The problem is when it begins to be a problem, when you're no right. longer productive, right? And when, you know, it interferes with your routine, people say, well, we have functional alcoholics. Yeah, you do. But there comes a moment when that functional alcoholic is no longer functional and it begins to interfere, right. you know, with, you know, their normal routine or productivity. So, so yeah, that that's they just say? You may not be an alcoholic, but you got alcohol problems. <laughs> yeah, you got alcohol problems. You Absolutely. Got alcohol problems. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and yeah. 
Yeah, and a lot of, you know, and, and a lot of a lot of folks have to watch that the at addiction part that you know at the extreme we have so many parents dealing with the opioid situation yes. and adults yes. as well but also just in terms of your own self-awareness are you moving to the three glasses of wine at night as opposed to the one you used to have before COVID I mean you right. know, just checking in with yourself to see what about when you notice that somebody you care about is kind of losing it a little bit I mean whatever <laughs> You know, the, we've all seen odd behavior in a friend, but, but sure. when do you say it's time for you to go see somebody? Again, when it's when you know it's weird, when you know that it's offered just a little too much, just a little too much. Offer to have lunch, you know, even if it's a Zoom lunch or whatever it is, offer to have it, right? And then see how they're coping and have it. If it's a real friend, if it's a real friend, then um, I think that friend will receive it in the spirit in which you give it, you know, and say, I've just noticed this, you know, how are you doing? And have you checked in with yourself? Awareness, you bring up awareness. Awareness is key. That's the beginning of everything. If we're not aware of what we're doing, we can't begin to make change. So um, you mentioned how, you know, checking in with yourself, journaling is a great way to do that. You know, if I'm having a glass of wine while I'm journaling, I should say having a glass of wine, you know, while, you know, at 830 at night, right? Because somewhere then I need to know, oh, two glasses of, of wine. <laughs> I was under the influence when I wrote right. it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Three <laughs> glasses of wine. I find, you know, and then you're seeing the progression, you know, of how you're coping or dealing with something or not, right? Dealing right. with it or not, you know, in a, in a non-productive way. So yeah, 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 yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. Well, Remember to else? keep ourselves, keep ourselves on the list. Keep ourselves yeah. on the list. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, yeah. it doesn't, we're so much into the texting thing that it doesn't hurt to pick up the phone and call a friend every once in a while, just to make sure, you know, do, that the people are okay, just touching base, touching base with you. you How know. about let's do it. Let's do that. How about let's do that. Yeah. Uh, texting a phone call right now, the voice is so important. Mm -hmm. And the voice is validating it, it, and it, and we're not. Listen, we have time at home. Why not pick up the phone and call? I know. Right? It's like, why don't you go? You know, and, yes. and I, I started feeling weird about calling people because people just don't talk on the phone the way they used to. Right. But then after a couple of friends who said, "Oh, I, I really love hearing from you," and I say, "I'm really branching out here because I don't call yeah. a lot." Um, yeah. It made us both feel good, and we both promised that we would do that a bit more, especially as we're getting older and we're single people, and yeah. you know, some of us yeah. need to check in. It's because uh, we all we all bought into that hustle, that hustle, hustle room that they try, yeah, that they tried to sell us. Absolutely, mm -hmm. that we're so busy. We, you know, let's just text. You're, you know, you're disrupting me. You're interrupting me, and I'm gonna. Right, like busy is yes. is, is success. Busy was yes. success. Remember busy is Vogue. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, well, I tell you, mm. I can't tell you the number of investment bankers that were in my office just trying to keep their head above water at 7 a.m. because they were spending the time at the office until 9 p.m. because they had kids in private school, just oh, just over leveraged, right? Kids in private school, the five million dollar home, the you know, the the, the bitly outside, just yeah. chasing it, chasing it, and barely keeping their head above water, busy. Busy, busy, busy doing what? Because it's in, no, no, yeah. no. Redefining success. I think that's a good way to uh, go into um, this new era. Mm. Redefining success. What does that look like for ourselves? I, what I, does I think that look yeah. like? You yeah, know? yeah. Because yeah. all of a sudden, you know, and especially like what we see here in LA and in Hollywood, the $35,000 purse on your arm and driving the big, car it, it, those things seem a little different now uh, yes, when of course put what what else is important yes, well absolutely. dr faith brown i thank you so very much i always thank enjoy you. talking with you yeah. and you know that the, we take the tough topic and and make it just just a a normal way to speak about it and i think the yeah. more that we talk about mental health and the more we're aware of it yeah. um, and the solutions i mean the there solutions. are tons of places to call if you need help the suicide hotline is one of the number one places if you're feeling it and such um and and about going to about getting a therapist anything that you would suggest i know there are um, places you can call and uh, absolutely you can always go to psychology today to take a look at you know to find a psychologist near you, as well as there are various organizations. If you happen to be a person of color, there is cliniciansofcolor.org. 
you can go to to find a psychologist near you. All you do is put in your zip code and you'll see, you know, across the country. Do you think that's important to have, if you're a person of color, to have a psychologist of color? I think it's important to have a psychologist who is, who, who um, specializes in multiculturalism. So if there is someone who understands culture, we're good. Not everyone understands culture. Culture, because there are culture. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You should absolutely have someone who is familiar with your culture. Listen, Mother's Day is coming up and a lot of people are going to be triggered. <laughs> yes. 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 Do you, I mean, right. seriously, yes. do you have to yes. deal with that? Um, I don't. I don't. Um, <laughs> I don't. Fortunately, listen, if I could, if I could go see my mom, I absolutely would. I've already sent cards and other things are on the way to her. Um she is because of her, I am, and I love her to bits. Uh, but a lot of people will be triggered both, you know, well, yeah, they will be triggered in a lot of ways. It's going to take a lot of forms. And all I can advise on that is to breathe, 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 breathe. because if you're fortunate enough to have mom still here, I don't care how difficult that is. She is the one that gave you life. So if there isn't for no other reason than gratitude for mm-hmm. the air that you breathe to, to breathe today, and again, control, because you can always dismiss yourself from that situation. You do not have to stay in a situation that's uncomfortable. You, we do not have to take up residence in toxic relationships. We do not, you know, but we can have an appreciation for the moment. Yeah. yeah. So you can still yeah. reach out, send a card, but you don't have to get all wrapped up into no. it. No, <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's Particularly- going to trigger other things, you know? It, it absolutely will. And we don't, again, control yourself. We don't need to place ourselves in spaces and places, right? That's not going to serve as well. We just don't have to do that. No matter who it is. No matter who it is. No, absolutely not. Boundaries are so important. Boundary setting is so important. Because some know? people feel like, well, this is my family member. I'm supposed to get beat up by them. And they put up with this miserable, d- 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 hateful yes. behavior. And this is just how they are. This is just how they why? are, right? And that's not that's not good enough. No, and because they're going to go on about their day and you're going to be left holding this emotional bag. So mm. no, is no. And some people will say, "Well, I don't like confrontation." And you like stewing in the emotional, you know, um stew that you're in right now? Mm. Absolutely not. People do not get to drop their garbage off at your door as if you are the garbage receptacle. Absolutely not. <laughs> Draw boundaries in the sand. We're responsible. And pardon me, this psychologist is going to go there. You're responsible for how much hell you allow in your private space and how much you make stay on the other side of that door. Absolutely not. Boundaries are so important. Turn the phones off. If you can't resist, you know, responding to text and having to answer the phone, turn them off. Block right. them. Block. Yeah, I'll block right. you in a minute. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You know, absolutely. We yeah. can do this. Just have agency. Just make sure that you, you, this is something you want to do. Do it. Whatever mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. Do it. And, and yeah. set your own boundaries. And that is definitely uh, helping perpetuate better mental health. Mental That's Health right. Awareness Month, y'all. Go do something for your mental health or oh, oh, help oh, somebody. Oh, oh. Yes, 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 Dr. Faye. Guess Brown. what? Go, go, it's go, go, also go. Masturbation Month. What? I didn't know such thing existed. Like, really? Oh, well, we were just talking about that. So there you go. Really? There's a little nugget for you. <laughs> There's a, that, that'll help me, your mental health in a whole bunch of ways. <laughs> Masturbation health, month yes. and mental health awareness <laughs> month. You can't beat it. I still think there's, there's a connection. There's a connection. M&M, M&M, M squared. <laughs> Yeah. That and a lot more coming up on Rolando on Demand. (laughs) That was a perfect commercial. Thank Thank you you. so much, honey. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. (laughs) Keep your head together. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. (laughs) Bye-bye.